everyone. Welcome to today's program. My name is Teacher Helen from Jesus Living Fountain. Let us pray. Mighty and everlasting Father, in the name of Jesus, we give you praise, we give you honor this morning. We adore you for whom you are, Jehovah. We thank you because of your love. We thank you because of your care. We thank you because of your protection, oh God, throughout the week. I want to thank you even for giving us yet another opportunity to be in your presence, King of Glory, to hear from you. I want to thank you for every viewer who has tuned in this, uh, this day. How I pray that in the name of Jesus, you shall, my Father, uh, make, uh, give us uh, understanding. You shall cause my Father our hearts to have uh, open ears of understanding, that we shall hear your word and we shall hide it in our hearts, that we may not sin against you. I want to thank you even for those, oh God, who have my father already tuned in. I pray that Jehovah, you shall be with them. Thank you even for those of my father who are not yet uh, on, but God, we thank you because soon they shall be joining this program. Thank you, my father, as we start. We welcome your presence in our midst. May you minister to us. In Jesus' name, we pray and say, Amen. And today, I want also to welcome us to today's program as we, we have just finished our Christmas. And I believe you had a wonderful uh, Christmas session. God bless you so much. And today I want to talk about Gideon, the mighty man of valor. Gideon, the mighty man of valor. So for so many years, the Israelites had sinned against God. They had done bad things against God. They had not followed uh, God's instructions and God allowed an enemy army called the Midianites to mistreat the Israelites for seven good years. And for these seven years, the Midianites used to come and destroy the pro pro produce of the products, uh, food products from the Israelites. They would come and destroy their animals, their livestock, and so forth. And the Israelites lived under oppression for quite a long time. And they cried to God. They were wondering, what is happening to us? And as they cried to God, God sent them a prophet. And the prophet came and told the Israelites, you are going through these hardships because of sinning against God, because of not obeying God. And as he told them this, the Israelites were crying and they were really yearning that they be delivered out of the oppression of their enemy, who were the Midianites and uh, the people from the east and even the Amalekites, they had really mishandled the, the Israelites. So as they continued, an angel of God appeared to a young man, who, uh, a young man named Gideon, a son to an Israelite man by the name Joash from the house of Manasseh. And Gideon was told by the angel, mighty man of valor, and Gideon wasn't feeling very good and very happy about that statement. He, uh, he asked the angel, if surely I am a mighty man, or if you are calling me that we are with God, how comes that God has allowed us to suffer this much? Yet we have heard from the history, from our parents, how God delivered the Israelites from the hands of the enemies, their enemies from the bondage in Egypt. And they had a conversation with the angel. And the angel told uh, uh, Gideon that surely Gideon was going to be used of God to deliver or rather to rescue the Israelites from the hands of the Midianites. And um, Gideon was really in disbelief and was even asking, I am the least in my family and my house, my father's house is the weakest. So how can it be that as weak as I am, I can be used of God. But the angel assured him that God will be with him. So Gideon obeyed, but told the angel, just before you leave, I really want to have a sign. Show me a sign that God will be with us, uh, God will be with me. And he told the angel to wait. He went somewhere uh, and, and did. Uh, uh, he prepared a sacrifice for God. And when he came back, indeed he found the angel. And the angel, when Gideon had prepared a court, and uh, he came uh, with a, uh, unleavened bread that he had prepared as a sacrifice to God. So when he came, the angel told him to uh, empty the, from the pot and the basket and put it on a, uh, put the, the, the sacrifice on a rock. And the angel stretched his staff 
on the foodstuffs. And indeed, there arose fire from the rock that consumed, rather, it consumed the foodstuffs. And um, Gideon was surprised. He realized, indeed, he was speaking to an angel. And he, he made an altar for God in that place. He realized that uh, this was a serious business. Though he still had fear, he still feared, and he was not confident. Just like some of us, sometimes we are not confident when God speaks to us. And therefore, um, uh, Gideon went tonight, uh, that night, he felt disturbed. God continued to speak to his heart, and God told him to destroy the altars of the Father, which were made for Baal, and to destroy even the statue that was next to the altar for Baal. And uh, Gideon did that. And uh, the following day, Gideon called a few men and they helped him to do that. So he did this overnight because he feared that his father, his, his family, would uh, maybe he would be uh, attacked. So he did at night because of the fear. And the following morning, when they, the Israelites learned about what uh, Gideon had done, they came and really wanted to find out who did this, who destroyed the Baal's altar, and so forth. So he, uh, the father came on his defense and said, if really Baal is a, a, a god, let him defend himself. And therefore that saved uh, Gideon. And therefore from there, Gideon realized that it is true. Uh, this is a, 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 there is a god in heaven. He now started believing in this god. And uh, that after that, Gideon still asked for another sign. And I would wish when you read the Bible, in the book of Judges chapter 6, you will be able to find the next sign. Uh, Gideon was talking about the fleas he took out and he was telling God if it will be wet and so forth. I don't want to go into details because of time. So Gideon was able to accept that there is a God who has given these signs. And therefore, the night, uh, th that night, uh, Gideon was told by God to, 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 to call an army, to prepare an army that will go to fight. And Gideon had called men from the Israelite family, the Manasseh, all the families of the Israelites, the Naphtali and so forth. They came together and they were ready to go for, for war against the Midianites. But there were too many. There were 33,000. God told uh, um, Gideon to tell them, whoever feels like he fears, let them go back because this army was too big. God didn't want them to use such a big army. So the 22,000 men went away. 10,000 remained. But still God said, this army is too big. Why was God saying this? God wanted the Israelites to know that the battle was fought by God and not them. They, God wanted them to put their trust in God and not to put their trust in their own energy, in their own strength. So God told them, God told um, Gideon, even these 10,000, I want you to take them down to the stream. And whoever will lap water using their mouths like a dog, let them go home. But those ones who will uh, scoop water using their hands, those ones are the ones that you will use to fight. And indeed, so many of them used their mouths to lap like dogs. But only 300 men remained. And those were the men that Gideon used. Gideon told them, listen to me. I will give you instructions. And you follow every instruction as I give you as we go to this war so that uh, you can, uh, we can see God is going to fight for us. As much as Gideon was still fearing, still he had some fear, and God told him, now Gideon, go down to the camp of the Midianites and you will hear uh, uh, something from them to give you more courage. Gideon took his servant called Pura. They went with him to the Gideon, uh, to the Midianite camp, and indeed he had a man who had had a dream that night, and the man was saying he saw bread uh, tumbling down to the tent of the, the, the Midianites, and it actually knocked the tent upside down. And that other person, I, I'm cutting the long story, but you can read it well, it, it's the other party, the other partner told him that actually that is a, a, a sign that uh, we have been given, the Midianites have been given into the hands of the man called Gideon, uh, the son to Joash. So this really encouraged Gideon because he overheard this interpretation of the dream, and this gave him courage. Be it Gideon now uh, had now gotten courageous, he realized that his true God is speaking. So he came and told his people that now they should follow the instructions that he's going to give them and they will go to fight the Midianites. He gave them the instruction that you will, uh, each one of you, I'll give you a trumpet 
I will give you a torch and I'll give you a jar. You take the torch and hide it in the jar. And then you will blow the trumpet at my command. As when he, tell, he blows his, then the rest of the people would blow their trumpets. And exactly that's what happened. Gideon blew his trumpet and then the torches, their torches were actually life. They were put on and they were flickering the torches together, smuggling them together. And the Midianites were asleep. Remember the Midianites were so many. The, the Bible says they were as numerous as locusts in their camp. So when they woke up in this night, they were all confused, they were scared, and they didn't know what to do. So in that confusion, they started fighting each other. They were fighting anyone and everyone around them. So they fought each other as they were running, thinking that they were fighting the Israelites. And Gideon used only the 300 men. And they were all shouting, as they were saying, the battle is God's and Gideon's. So they were shouting and uh, because of the, the flickering of the torches around them and the cracking of the sound of the glasses and the piercing of the glasses and the trumpets, there was a lot of confusion in the camp of the enemy, in the camp of the, Amalek, uh, the, the Midianites. So in this confusion, I've said, they started running at uh, running around fighting anyone and everyone around them, thinking that they were battling the Israelites. The confusion spread so rapidly that they ran away, and Gideon and his three men defeated the Midianites. So, Gideon, as he had been told by the, the angel, that he's a mighty man of valor, indeed, Gideon was a mighty man of valor. So what did I see from this story of Gideon? The first thing I saw, Gideon was obedient. Gideon just obeyed and he was faithful. When he was told by the angel or he was told by God that uh, he would fight and defeat the Midianites, Gideon did not uh, argue with God. He was uh, faithful and he took the word of God as it was and therefore it was easier for the uh, for the for the Israelites to defeat the Midianites and therefore uh, what I would wish to tell us is that sometimes we look at ourselves like Gideon we are full of fear we are full of uh, anxiety we don't trust ourselves we don't believe in ourselves we feel like we cannot do anything. Though Gideon was spiritual, I would say, because he actually followed by asking even for a sign. He said he wanted a sign. And we have seen Gideon has been given the first sign where the angel has actually um, touched the foodstuffs and they were consumed. That was the first sign. The second sign when Gideon told uh, the angel that he's taking out the wool fleece and he wants it, if it is if, if it is true that this is God, he wants it to be dry so that the, dew, the, the, the ground around it should remain wet when the fleece, the wood fleece will be, uh, 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 will be wet. That's exactly what happened. Again, he reversed the same story or the same sign by saying, now God, if it is true you are God, can, now, can you now reverse this sign? Let the fleas be dry and the ground, the, so, sorry, the, 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 the fleas to be, yeah, to be dry and the ground around it to be wet. And God proved himself true. And therefore, I saw Gideon to be a very spiritual person. I saw Gideon to be a humble person. Gideon, in his humility, took the instructions. We see a man who was so fearful, a man who never knew God can use him. And one thing I'm seeing in the Bible, most of these people that God is using are people that he qualifies while they are already in the field. What does that mean? People who look at themselves and see their weaknesses more than their strength. And God uses the same weaknesses to use them and actually exalt his name. And therefore, what am I trying to say? You could be having any weakness in yourself or with yourself. There could be something you are looking at. It could be that uh, you have not been able to go to school to the level that others have gone, but you can still be used of God. So I saw, even as, uh, uh, as David, the shepherd boy, 
was brought to fight Goliath. Goliath was more qualified because he had all the skills. But imagine David came in just a young boy, but God used David to even fight Goliath. So it means what? God uses even the unqualified. The people who look at themselves and feel, I am not qualified for this, I cannot do this, I cannot be able. The only thing God wants us to be is that we should be willing, we should be willing, we should be ready and willing to do what God wants us to do. When we are avail, when we avail ourselves, you know, availability again is the other challenge. I may be saying that um, I am I'm willing, but then I'm not available. So availability would also qualify us. God wants a vessel that is ready to be used. Gideon looked at his family and he felt like they were the least in their family. They were the least. You know, they were the weakest, I mean. They were the weakest in the Manasseh family. But again, he looks at himself. Could be he was the last one. That's why he's saying, I am the least in my family. But God did not look at all that. God did not look at his weakness. God did not look at... Imagine God using jars and torches. You know, I loved this story so much. To see how our God... You know, it is just following the instruction that God gives us. And God is able to use this instruction as we follow it for his own glory. So God used the jars and the torches that scared the, the Midianites. They woke up and in that confusion, they saw like they were attacked and therefore they did not even understand whom they were fighting. And that's why we see they were fighting everyone and anyone around them. So what do I want to say? Let us avail ourselves for God's work. Let us be humble and God will use us. Let us be a people who will listen to the voice of God and obey God. And God is faithful because even with the signs that um, uh, Gideon was asking for, God was faithful to make sure that all those signs came to be as Gideon was asking for them. Now. In our weaknesses, God is able to exalt himself. How I pray that as we read the memory verse today, it shall be a memory verse that shall remind us. It is in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. It shall remind us that in our weaknesses, God is capable of exalting himself. The Bible says, and he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, most gladly, I will rather boast in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. This is all. Let me see new NIV. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. So this means that God's grace is sufficient. The grace of God is sufficient. There is no mission God will give us and then he does not uh, uh, enable us because his grace is sufficient for us. And then he's saying that his power is made perfect in weakness. God's power is made perfect in our weaknesses. Therefore, Paul said, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness. So we should borrow from Paul. Let us even boast ourselves more gladly about our weakness so that Christ's power may rest upon us. So I pray that this memory verse shall be a memory verse that we shall also memorize so that when we are going through those challenges, we shall always remember my grace, that God's grace is sufficient. And as I said from the word go sometimes back, I was saying that uh, it's important when we hide this word in our spirit. Because when we come across our challenges, God quickens the word in our spirit. And it reminds us of what God wants us to be. Or where we feel we cannot be able to do something, God will remind us. So if this verses that we are doing every day on Sundays as uh, 
those children will do the verses. Don't just sit there and watch. It is important even you who has not participated in those memory verses, pick a memory verse, recite that memory verse, hide it in your spirit, and at, at, and, at when the need arises, God will weaken that one in your spirit, and you shall realize that you shall use it for the glory and honor of God. Let us pray. My God and my Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you even for that uh, opportunity you've given us to hear from you. Thank you for reminding us that, my God, your power is made strong, even strengthened in our weaknesses. I pray that, my Father, many at the times that we give reasons, we give reasons that, my Father, ourselves we feel they are strong enough to defend us, not to do your work. How I pray that in Jesus' mighty name, that you shall remind us all the time that, my Father, your grace is sufficient and you are, we are made strong because of the power that you breathed upon us. I thank you for every person who has heard this word. I pray that, my Lord and my Father, we shall hide thy word in our spirits that we may not sin against you in the name of Jesus Christ. I want to thank you because, my Lord, we shall put our trust in you and we shall not lean on our own understanding because you are Jehovah. Even as we live this day, I pray that my Lord and my Father, you shall continue to speak to our spirits the way you continue to speak to, to Gideon even in the night that he went to destroy, to destroy Baal's um, uh, uh, altars in the name of Jesus Christ. As we part, I speak my Father blessing upon each one of them. In Jesus' name, we pray and say, Amen. Thank you.